Welcome to this week's duels for the Sohi Cup. I am very, very excited to welcome you to this week's episode. The unfortunate thing here is it was actually planned that I had guests and the thing is I already recorded with those guests. I was in a call with Nick from Dimyo Tundra and with TCG Wolf from TCG Wolf and Vienna's was also there for a brief period of time. But it happened that I lost a whole audio track and that was my audio track. And that makes the whole recording very, very invalid. <laughs> so you have to live with my commentary again. I'm very sorry. Next week that won't happen. I will take some security measures that it won't happen again. And as a little gift for you, I was able to recover a bit of the audio from the audio that Wolf and Nick had and I will insert a bit of that into the episode. At least I think the duel that Wolf had because he nearly completely casted that duel on his own. So without further ado, let's jump right into game number one. We start off in group A with Saitsimas vs. Benjiman. Game 1, we start with Saitsimas still playing his um, weird Eldritch Shadow Lair deck that is like an amalgamation between all of this three. He gets out the El Shadow Construct. Yes, the thing. Funny meme, haha. <laughs> <laughs> and he sends the Eldlixer to Grave and gets out the Eldlich. Eldland activates and sends Huacrero that brings the White Elixir, I think, or Eldlixir? Is it Eldlixir or Elixir? I'm not completely sure. There comes the Quick Launch bringing out the Rocket Tracer and Saitsimas reacts to get out his Winda and activating Sinister Shadow, Shadow Games Dumping the Wendy, setting the dragon. Was it dragon or was it beast? I haven't... It was beast, it was not the dragon. And now with everything in attack position, it is not looking too good for Benji, but I don't think it is game here. Activating Wind and Grave, getting the Air Shadow Fusion, getting out another Winda. Oh, it is game. We have seen those duels, but I don't remember that much of those duels because we mostly talked about other things. <laughs> and a bit about the duels. Game 2, Sidesmask is going first again, and I can see it's Elixir of White Destiny. He then activates his Cursed Edland, getting the Conquistador, and setting three pass. Um, Benjamin activates Chaos Space, sending Brotor, and that should be a word. Legacy Guard Dragon getting back the Brotor that gets countered with the Sinister Shadow Games, or at least the Shadow Games get chained. That sets the Aerial. There's the Tracer going into, I think it is Quad Boral Dragon. Bring where Sightsmas brings out Winda, which stops the special summoning. White, burst, white Dragon Wyvern Burster gets activated in Grave, getting the Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. And Saitsimas sets an Elixir, or oh, Sanguine Elixir thingy. And there is the Schism activation from Benji Man. Gets another Quacrero and bringing out a very big Golden Boy. Attacking for 3-5 and passing to Benji, who activates the mind control, trying to take over the window. But he activates, I think it was the fusion and getting out the Quacreo so he could set the window so it wasn't affected by the mind control. I think no, he got the mind control, he got it in the end, but it was set so it couldn't attack. Attacking with the Haquero into the window and attacking directly for not game here. But with the schism he gets out a 
El Shadow Construct setting a Hedgehog and passing, but Benji has only, I mean, he's Silver Rocket Dragon and an El Shadow Fusion, but I don't think he can make that work. Top decking into Polarimization actually seals the deal here, I guess. And that is game for Sightsimmers. Match two, Corvus against Chu. Chu going first. Orcus last Orcus with a Dino Wrestler Machina danger deck. Something? <laughs> Thing. Uh, Chains the Machina Air Raider, getting out the Machina Fortress. And Corvus doing Ice Barrier stuff. And Ice Barrier stuff means normal summon revealer which normally gets you into the combo that you want to go into, but I don't think... Um, oh! Why does he set the Fairy Duster? Feather Duster, not Fairy Duster. <laughs> I'm a bit stupid sometimes. Okay, there comes back the Fortress and the Citadel. And it's Corvo's turn. Can you turn this around? Activating Winds of the Ice Barrier and the Grave. Trying to get rid of the Citadel, he then normal summons the Revealer, getting out the Speaker and the Hexa Spirit, which reduces the Fortress and the Scrap Berserk. Oh, and he gets bye bye damaged. Yeah, that happened. That gets happened. <laughs> he tried to attack into the Scrap. It, I think it is Berserker, but with Trishula. Is it Bryanek? It is Bryanek. It is Bryanek. And he gets bye bye damaged. Oh, that is. That is something. Game two. Corvus now going first after Chu went first in game one. Oh, set to pass. That is something. Machina redis, redis, redeploy. I can't read. Normal summon the Machina soldier getting out the Citadel. And there comes the crackdown. Chaining the Cosmic Cyclone. And that is 3000 damage more that Corvus has to take. He then activates the medallion, getting the revealer, normal summoning a revealer, striked. And I think that is a game from here because True has already enough damage on board. And I completely forgot what the set card was, but it definitely wouldn't have helped. So True takes this game. As you can see, those are the standings after week two. Saitsema's definitely first in the group and already qualified for the champions bracket. And the same goes for Corvus, who lost both games or matches and is already safe for the constellation bracket. What not is safe, what, what hasn't been secured is the placement for Benjamin and Chu, who both still have to duel each other for the championship bracket. Both are at one win, one loss. That means the next duel next week is going to decide who is advancing to the championship bracket and who is going to the consolation bracket. Very exciting stuff, I guess. Going into group B, we have Bienas versus Steel Gym Gaming. Bienas, who is, I think, favorite to at least come very far in this tournament, against Steel Gym, who has a very Unconservative deck with the Harpies, going to be interesting. Game one, Bienna's going first. I think, but I think that is not the deck that is trained to go first. He can go into the Code Talker, activating Code deck that gets ashed and ends the turn right there. Steel Gym then <laughs> tries to activate Harpy Queen which gets Ash from Bienna's, normal summoning Harpy Lady and equipping it with the Harpy Shield, I guess, which takes out the Code Talker and <laughs> Bienna's n doesn't normal summon. And that is Harpy Beatdown in its finest form. Going to s Cyber slash Harpy Lady, I guess, if I have read this correct. <laughs> Activating one for one, bringing out Dotscaper and going into the um, Transcode Talker? No, it was not Transcode Talker. Talkback Talker? Something like this. And there comes the Harpy Shield. And that's game. No, it's not game. It's 400 for Viennas. That is a close one. Microcoder? He can make something work with a Microcoder and Dotscaper. And Lost Wind gets activated from Grave. And that is game because Viennas surrendered. 
Definitely not what anyone would have expected, I guess. That Harpies win against Co-Talkers. <laughs> so we go into game two. Bienna's going first again. But this hand looks a lot better because he already has Lady Debug. But that gets Veilert and <laughs> called by the Grave just to counter the Veiler. Oh, that is something. Okay, linking into Bailings, going into the Co-Talker. Normal summoning Gaz... No, special summoning Gazelle. Dumping Spinny to special summon it and linking off into Splash Mage, getting back the Microcoder, going into Transcode, and that brings back the Splash Mage. And there comes the Firewall Dragon. Very hype card, very hype. Um, the Pancratops gets special summoned and pops the back row, and then he normal summoned this Harpy Lady 1, equipping it with the Harpy with the Shield thingy. Thing, yeah, thing. Get the counter. <laughs> and I think Bienas is just flexing a bit because there is Code Talker, the Axis Code Talker. And that is more than enough damage to take game two. Game three. Didn't expect for Bienas with a Steel Gem to go into game three because, oh, Harpy's Hunting Grounds are there. But is it, is it going to be enough? And I see two Lady Debug, which are combo starters. And again, there is the Ash. And the strike on the bailings, silent optimization, brings out in the end a code talker and getting a codec to hand. He then can link off into trans code talker and getting him a Gachiri at Ignista, bringing the code talker back from grave. There happened a lot of stuff and <laughs> in the end he can go into access code. I don't think that Steel Gem has any interruption here. And that was 10,600 10, damage right into Steel Gem's face. My god, that is an OTK if I have ever seen one. And from here we go into match number two in Group B. That is Heart of the Bards Levi against the Pokemon Arc. And Levi going first, activating... Um, Spiritual Arts setting the, I think, teamwork? Is it teamwork? He actually goes into his Dryden, sets three pass, and activating the Misk to activate Lost World. And that gets met with a Dryden. He brings back the uh, Trick Clown and activates Solemn Warning on the Misk activation. That ends the turn for Pokemon Arc. Oh, not looking good. Um, Mastery of Spiritual Arts and activating Awakening of the Possessed, turning everything into attack position, activating Unpossessed as well, and hitting in for a lot of damage. And in the end, activating Secret Village of the Spellcasters. Pokemon Ox surrenders here because there were no place he could have gone into. Game 2, Levi going first again. And activating Magical Meltdown, Normal Summon Alistar, getting the Invocation and Gigabyte with um, Alistar overlaying into Chakanine, overlaying into Dryden. And there's the set Twin Twisters to counter the Lost World, but he has a second one. Activating Misk and there comes down the Archaeosaur. Activating Lost World as Chainlink 2, and he chains Dryden to it, so he doesn't get the token and the Lost World activation. But UCT coming out. And that is a lot of damage. I mean, 3 5, but still a lot of damage. He has the invocation in hand. I think Awakening of the Possessed. There comes the area from the normal summon and invocation into Mechaba. And that is something that oh and with the alistair boost from hand that is enough to uh, to roll over a uct normal summon pancratops and hitting into no special summoning pancratops hitting into area and then activating effect to pop the mechaba he activates a second meltdown of course there comes the alistair alistair gets met with driver and gammer and Pokemon Arc has no cards in hand. That is not the top deck that you want to see with the Dark Rune no more. He activates Terraforming going to the Secret Village of Spellcasters, but he discards it. Normal summoning area and hitting for 2150. 
and he needs a good top deck and that is monster reborn he get wants to get the mecha bar from levi and that gets met with a solemn warning still nothing on the side of pokemon arc here another 2150 to the face lost world gets activated but i don't think that is enough i mean it minimizes the, <laughs> the effect that area has on the life point and the lancia got fired blind that blind lancia and pokemon arc top decks into double evolution pill that is something have you seen that i mean in the original cast that we had we said okay levi needs a normal monster uh, a monster then he top decks lancia and then <laughs> we said okay any monster that is not Lancia. But in the end, the Lancia that was fired blind won him the game in the end, I think. That is very, very cool. <laughs> to round off group B, we have Biennas on first place and we have Levi in second place. Steel Gym Gaming and Pokemon Arc are in third or respectively fourth place. Both can't advance to the championship bracket because Bienas and Levi locked it already. That means Bienas has to do Levi for first place. The same goes for Steel Gym against Pokemon Arc for third place. My god, I didn't expect any group to be completely decided by the end of week two. Going into group C, that is my group. So we start off with Ray Knight Gaming against Soul Wizard game number one. Ray Knight is going first and I see a Toon Kingdom and I see a Comic Hand. Pass. Doing nothing. Pass. Letting the Soul Wizard play. Bringing out the blue eyes and attaching the radar. Something. -y. Yeah. Thing. I said it. <laughs> and there comes the Jizukiro and directly Comic Handed and reborning the, the dragon. The blue eyes white dragon. Jizukiro attacks directly and going into the Black Luster Soldier, Tomb BLS. I mean, the Shining Angel is still there, but Normal some Maiden, I don't think that is very, very good right now. And get, even gets Kaiju, so... <laughs> what is he supposed to do? So Wizard um, dumping... Um, yeah, why, what, he just dumped something and just ended his turn. I didn't understand that, but game one for Ray Knight. Game two, Ray Knight going first again. We see two Super Poly Interrupted Kaiju Slumber and the Toon World, as well as a Toon BLS. Just setting a Super Poly and pass. He uh, dumps the Kitmodo Dragon with the Mathematician and sets another one pass. Okay, interesting turns. Um, there's the Guiding Light going into Deco Talker Extended. That means 2300 damage to the face for Ray Knight. Activating Toon World, and there is a Comic Hat in hand and comes down the Twister. But Ray Knight has another Toon World. That gets him the Deco Talker Extended, attacking for 23 directly to the face. There comes Nova Summoner and Darren Rosa Pankratops trying to pop the Deco Talker Extended, which actually worked, and hitting for 1400 in the face. Interrupted Kaiju Slumber brings Jizukiru to Ray Knight's field and Gamma Seal to So Wizard's field and hitting in to the Kaiju directly with another 1100 that So Wizard has to take. He sets one pass and then comes the Tomb Table of Contents. There is the other Kaiju. I'm not completely sure what Kaiju that is. Dust Kaiju. Um, that is the other Kaiju that is definitely weaker than Jizukiru and Jizukiru attacks for a game in the end. So after Reina takes the match number one, there is Nick against myself. And we watched this duel yesterday when I was, or the day before when I was recording this with the others and yep, I can go into my complete destiny here, a fusion destiny combo, but he veilers my um, cross crusade activation, which isn't too bad for me. I just get everything out that I want, set to pass, 
hit over the Link Rebo. He still has the blue eyes, but I get into Dark Law and get the search for Honest News. So if he wants to hit over anything, he needs an attack boost. He gets the Protector and special summons the Master with the eyes of blue or Monk. Blue eyes swords, swordsman. Yes. I normally summon Stratos, trying to activate effect, but that gets negated by Chalice and I link into my Dread Decimator and then hit over everything that he has on field. Now two really big boys and Stratos, which is actually big as well. The Dragon Shrine activation didn't make any sense at all, but he did it just because he could. Game 2, he's going first again, which I really like, since he had the choice. He normally summons Protector, special summons the White Stone of Ancients. And there comes the Blue Eyes, bringing the White Stone of Ancients to his grave, but I ash it when he wants to activate it. The Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon actually is a bit of a pain, since I can't activate... Oh no, that is... it gets another one. That is the Azerite, which is the pain, since I couldn't target monsters on his side of the field. He top decks into D-Barrier and attacks me for a lot of damage and sets a D-Barrier and pass. I activate Fusion Destiny and he activates D-Barrier and I think, okay, shit. Normal summon um, my Liquid Soldier and that gets Veilert, so I didn't get anything out, but I mask change it into Acid and couldn't activate effect, but I don't take lethal, so I top deck Miracle Fusion, which was a godsend. I could get out the Sunrise, discard the Malicious, because I had it in hand after the effect of Liquid Soldier. There comes the Malicious and the Rota, and I had so many options that I could go into, activating another Miracle Fusion to get out the absolute zero and then I could attack over everything activating the sunrise effect on the azure eyes and that is game for me. The same that goes for group B goes for group C. Ray Knight Gaming and myself are locked for the championship bracket. The same is for Nick or Demio Tundra and so Wizard both are locked for the constellation bracket. Still the placement doesn't hasn't been decided so we will see who ends up where. And now I will, I will still, for Group D, I will still commentate the duel, but I don't know, maybe he will get the original wolf commentary. It is it's game me. one, wolf, get, wolf against Ben from Heart of the Bards. Please subscribe. Just for that yeah, look at that hand. Take a look at the hand, can you guess what's going to happen in this Normal hand? Normal summon Alistair. Meltdown and just fucking get out the big daddy boy -o. What the fuck are you gonna do against this one? You gonna break my back row, huh? No fuck you, no fuck you action. Activating Trick Club, fucking Jajibus. What are you gonna do? There's a fucking summoning beast and holy shit, I misplayed. <laughs> Look at that, fuck you, no fuck you, there's wind. What are you gonna do now, big boy? <laughs> Your chunguses have nothing on the special summoning restrictions. Here I go with my fuck you, no fuck you move of attacking you in the face. You look at your big chunguses at hand, they do fucking nothing. Please subscribe yep, and like the video. No, no, please, please subscribe and like the video, my family is being held hostage. Here we go into- I can't even see my own fucking head, I have no idea what's going on. Look at that fucking thing. Oh my god, it's going to bring out that other thing. And guess what? Fuck you, I have an ash. So more fuck you, no fuck you action as he attempts to go into his fucking big chungus. And guess what he does? That's 4,000 points of chungus. How will I ever get through this? Normal well, summon Alistair? I normal summon Alistair. And he fuck- that's pretty old me. Who cares? Look at me. This is eternal. Can you guess what's going to happen from this when I activate Shadow Fusion to go into Shakanaga because I fucking hate myself? Activate his Commander's Effect to get Dragon to pop his fucking trap card. It keeps gaining in life points. He's a piece of shit. And look, there's Cross Sheep. Can you guess what I'm going to activate? It's fucking Invocation. Invocation breaks up Purgatory. Oh, Cross Sheep activates, giving me another fucking card. Invocation activates, giving me fucking Alistair back to my hand. Can you guess what I'm going to do with Alistair? Fucking nothing. Here he is, boys. It's Dragoon. Take your 4,000 beats in the face, motherfucker, as I win the duel by attacking you directly with the force of I don't know shit he didn't because uh he did 
You have to remember, he gained 4,000 life points from his trap card because he controlled uh, Hamon. So he still took it, but he just survived. But that doesn't fucking matter as I activate Daddy Dragoon's effect once again and punching him in the face. And guess what? I'm moving on to the championship bracket. On to the last match of the week. Demo against Screech. Activating Awakening of the Possessed, getting out the Heater, activating Tris Magistus for the um, Endymion, attaching it with Artemis, and activating it to get Crowley, I guess. Overlaying into Bahamut Shark, sending Crowley, and there is Totally Awesome. I completely hate Totally Awesome, but getting rid of Unpossessed, dumping the core. There is a Cyber Dragon and the core comes back. Another, oh my god, the Machine Dupe after the Predator Plant by the Anaconda. And there are, there is the Nova, there is the Infinity. And he, <laughs> to the totally awesome, he chains his Infinity and he dumps the Red Eyes Fusion. So the replay ended here because Demo just surrendered because Dragoon was about to come down. Game two, Demo going first again, and uh, setting one, uh, normal summoning Reliona, and that gets Ogurt. Then um, he, I, I don't know, those Spirit Charmer cards look <laughs> completely similar. He gets out the Nefarious Archfiend of Nefariousness, Nefarious Archfiend, and I think it's Reliona in defense, normal summon core. Over, uh, linking into Almirage, Cyber Repair Plant, getting him, I think it was the Galaxy Soldier, activating Cyber Emergency, dumping the Cyber Dragon to get out the Galaxy Soldier, doing the same with the Altanen to overlay into Nova, that gets striked, and Nova activates Engrave to get out the Twin Dragon, Nesta in hand to get out Anaconda, and Anaconda dumps Overload Fusion, so he has the Rampage Dragon out. And the Twin Dragon gets uh, destroyed. And I think he can attack three times? Two times? With the... Yeah, it is three times and f with 500 directly from the Verte Anaconda. He just top decks into the Ash Blossom, which he normal summons. I don't think it made a difference. He then activates Predator Plant Verte Anaconda, dumps the Red Eyes Fusion, and there is the Surrender from Demo. To wrap also this group up, we have TCG Wolf definitely locked in for the championship bracket and Screech and Demo are both on the second place. I mean in the end Demo is on third place since he lost the direct duel against Screech, which means Screech is nearly locked in. Screech has to duel Ben next week and Wolf has to duel Demo next week. If Demo wins against Wolf, Screech has to lose against Ben. If not, Demo drops to the Constellation bracket and Screech goes on to the Championship bracket. All Screech has to do is to win. So you're going to see how this goes next week. Other than that, I hope you really enjoyed this episode of Soji week number two. And I'm very sorry that you didn't get to enjoy the marvelous commentary of Demure Tundra and TCG Wolf. But other than that, I hope to see you next week, 6 May, same time, same day, I mean Thursday. And I hope you're ready for the last group stage duels. See you then. Bye bye.